Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about friction. And in particular, we're going to be talking about two types of friction. One is for stationary, stationary objects. And another type of friction is for moving objects. Now, it's been experimentally verified that the maximum friction force the maximum friction force that can be exerted on a stationary object is going to be equal to mu s n, where n is your normal force and mu s is your coefficient of static friction. Likewise, it's been experimentally verified that for moving objects, the friction force is constant and it's always going to be equal to mu k n, where mu k is just your coefficient of kinetic friction, and n is still your normal force. Okay. Now, it's also been shown that in almost all cases, mu s is going to be greater than mu k. However, this isn't the case in, in every particular type of material you're going to be looking at, but for almost every case, mu s is going to be greater than mu k. Now, in order to understand this entire concept a little bit better, I've got this animation which should hopefully make things a little bit clearer. So let's say that we've got this green block, which is lying on this ground just here, and this ground has friction. Now, if we wanted to make this block move, what we can do is we can apply a force to it, and I'm going to apply a force P to it. But we know from reality that if we apply a force to, say, a table on a carpet, there are some values of our force we're applying which aren't large enough to make the table move across the carpet. That's because there's a friction force acting on the junction between the carpet and the table in the opposite direction. Now, in order for this block not to accelerate, that means that these two forces must be equal in magnitude to each other. I should also mention a small disclaimer here. I'm only here drawing a free body diagram of the horizontal forces. Strictly speaking, there's a force due to gravity, mg downwards, and a normal force, which is n, which is equal to mg upwards as well. Okay, now let's explore this a little bit further. We know there are a range of values for which P doesn't actually um, get the block to move, and that's because your friction force will change um, depending on your value of P. In fact, it will always be equal to the magnitude of P. But then, when we keep trying to push the table more and more, eventually the table gives way. And that's because your friction force has reached its maximum friction force. Basically, the, the friction cannot stop you from moving the table anymore. And eventually, if you push this table a little bit harder, just a smidgen, then this entire table will start to move in the direction of the force you're applying. Right? And you're about to see that right now. And when you apply just a little bit more force, bam, it starts to move. Now notice, once the table starts to move, then the friction force remains constant at mu kn. And mu kn is typically less than mu sn, right? So it remains constant. And of course, the table starts accelerating. And you get this type of phenomenon right there. Let's actually watch this entire thing again, but this time keeping track of our force P and our friction force as they vary. So as our friction force um, increases, our, our, our force P increases as well, and they've got to be equal to in magnitude. And basically then we reach a maximum value, mu S n just here, mu S n just here. Then as soon as it starts moving, it drops down straight to mu K n and stays constant. I hope that makes sense, guys. I'm going to make this run through once more so we can really get this entire idea built in. Okay, remember, the maximum friction force is mu sn, just the maximum one. And then for moving objects, it's always going to be equal to mu kn. Okay, guys, that's it. Just this last one. I should also mention that this is experimentally verified. There are cases in which the surface area and the velocity of the block do actually come into play with friction, but this is a fantastic approximation. Okay, guys, that's, video, that's this video sorted. I hope that really makes sense. I'm going to cover a few more practice problems now.